Oh my god. Okay. Get on. There we go. Hello everybody. I hope all of you are doing very well. Welcome to the real tarot live stream. Um, oh my god, I'm strong. <laughs> of course I have to do everything last minute, right? I had a personal reading that I had to um, do and um, it just it just carried on for a little too long. I don't know if I was happy about that simply because it took so much of my time. But then again, I can't hurry people and say, you know, um, sorry, get off the phone. I have to go for a live reading. So sometimes things happen. So I do apologize for that. I'm still kind of organizing some of my things here. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me see. Give me just a second. I barely had time to even go and get a cup of coffee. So, yep, it's good. So, Sherilyn, hello, Sunshine Dragonfly, Pauline, um, Gypsy Girl, hello, Susie Q, Tammy Smith, hello, Coffee Talk with Shining Survivors. Oh, that's a nice name. Hello, are you, um, wait, were you with us before? Hmm. Jerry, hello. Kathleen Cheney, hello. Shock Simler, hello. Starlight, hello. Courtney, hello. So, um, I know that tomorrow is the, um, yeah. Tomorrow is Saturday, the last Saturday, and then that's usually when I have the uh, Zoom, right? I've already set it up. I just haven't had a chance to send out the emails. I do apologize. So um, I will send out the emails the moment this live is over. It won't take more than 15 minutes to send them out. I'll do that. I don't like to send a group email simply because I know some, some folks might not be comfortable with that. So I prefer to send individual emails. Uh, so I'll send them out right after the Zoom is, uh, uh, I mean, this live stream is over. So all of you folks, the regulars who've been there, you're all going to get the invitation anyway. If there's anybody else who's wanting to uh, join in for the Zoom, please uh, send me an email. And uh, just give me your username, uh, not your username, your, uh, what do you call, oh my God, is it username? Uh, in the live chats, whatever name you use over here, and uh, I will send you the link to the Zoom and you just click on it. You don't need to be a member of Zoom or you don't have to register on Zoom. There's no payment, nothing like that. So then we have uh, Courtney's there, Delvin, Aquarius Girl, hello. Another thing I wanted to discuss with y'all is that... Um, I have decided to go ahead and organize uh, the uh, or, or schedule the classes for tarot reading. I will get the uh, dates confirmed, everything like my sheet of paper that I have all the details with. And I will um, announce it on one of the lives so that way you all will know, uh, you know, um, how to go about registering, what is the fees, if any, what is the material you use, the dates, the times, and etc. So we'll get to that sometime. Starlight says, Kay, have you tried covering your mic with a sock or something to dampen the sound? I actually have a pretty fancy setup here. So if any of y'all are hearing any kind of a noise, if that what that is what you're you're talking about. Then it's the fan because this is a pretty expensive setup I have the mic and it's got that rabbit tail on it and all that so I'm okay. Anybody else struggling with the sound or finding it uh, um, like I don't know what Starlight is trying to say uh, is it is it. Um, 
Maybe the sound is on your end. I mean, I'm just not going to bother with that anymore because I can't. Yeah, exactly. So, Starlight, you need to fix the sound on your end, honey. Let me just say that. There's always somebody who has an issue with it. And, and in all honesty, you know, I mean, the, the, uh, the problem could be on my end. But the only time that I have problem with uh, sound on my end is when our dear folks who, who want to visit us often, they want to play hooky with us, you know. Other than that, I don't see... Um, So, anywho, um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> Shock Sambla says her, her, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Starlight says it's a tiny X mark. I have no idea what that means. Anyhow, um, no God mode yet or spirit mode <laughs> or trickster mode, right? <laughs> Susie Q, I agree. Uh, Janet Ackerlin says hello to you all from Sweden. Oh, okay. I'm glad. Uh, nobody else has a problem with the fan. I don't know why you, you're here. You, you didn't even know if I hadn't told you. So I'm not going to waste time on that. Oh, Elizabeth, good to know you're feeling better. Yes, you know what? Cody, that's a very uh, a good question. Um, a lot of people ask me about that. And part of my uh, class will also be how to read tarot for cusps. Yes, cusps are a real thing. Absolutely. It's not a controversial subject at all. Some people want to because it's too complicated for them. So every sign has uh, decants, right? Or, or parts, like four equally divided parts whatever so it depends on where you fall um so no it's not a, a, a lot of people say it's controversial because they don't want to deal with it um but having said that it's a very interesting uh subject uh and you can really get into a lot of details over there because the sign will have uh, aspects of both you know let's say if uh, if you're a cusp between a scorpio and a sagittarius then you will have a lot of uh, aspects of scorpionic energy i mean you'll have a lot of scorpionic energy as well as sagittarius energy but then again it depends on where is your moon where is the venus right and then you can say okay considering that the sun moon and and venus are have these houses or these stars or planets attached to them then in these aspects they are more Sagittarius than they are Scorpio, you know. It's a big thing. It's it's interesting. Hey Alia, how you doing? I know. I don't know. I think it's all that Mercury retrograde and all that drama, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I finally, my own nails, I decided, like, there we go. I decided, you know what, I'm done with the long ones. And um, I was like, just, thank you. <laughs> uh, Yeah. So cusp, they usually say it's three days, right? The day it changes the day before and the day after. Again, it's all a question of varying degrees. Give me one second, y'all. Just give me one second. Let me just shut that door.
I put on some, some lip balm and now I feel like it's all over my mouth. And I have to, you know me, how I get inner about these things. Y'all, this reading that I did, this personal reading, I started at 4 o'clock. No. No, not at 4 o'clock. What time did I start? Anyway, it was supposed to be an hour and a half. Yeah, I just ended now, so I started at 5. Um... It was, no, it was supposed to be an hour. I started at 5, but they kept on and on and on asking questions. And I'm okay with that. So the uh, reading was for an aunt of a particular individual. Or rather, the aunt asked me to do a reading for her niece. So towards the end, like some other people started coming into the Zoom. It was Zoom, right? And I can see. And I'm like, who are all these people? And then she goes, oh, this is my grandma, and um, this is this one, and this is the five people. So I'm trying to kind of get to the reading, and she's busy introducing everybody to me, which is fine. I appreciate it. But then they're all asking personal questions, and I said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't know whether they just thought they could sneak in, and if they're watching this, well... I just called their bluff or whether they were genuinely like they didn't know and they were like you know but I'm going to say they know that I don't do freebie questions like that I mean that's just not fair to me I mean if you ask hey at the end of the reading can we ask a couple of questions like off the record or can you like a favor then I would have said yes but then if you're going to spring five people at me and then say oh I have a question I have a question this is for me that's for me I'm like, yeah, I have a question. Can you hush? <laughs> right? I kind of got mad there, but what are you going to do? But anywho. Yeah, that kind of pissed me off the whole. Oh, thank you. I do like these. I, I, I do like this color. I do like the length. Uh, it's, it's easy. Y'all, believe it or not, with those long nails I had, I was able to give Bernie a bath too. And I didn't hurt him and I didn't hurt myself. So I thought that was pretty <laughs> cool. But yeah, it kind of bothered me. I mean, you know, I understand, you know, if it's like a family thing and then, you know, everybody's concerned about it. It has happened in the past, like a missing person case or whatever. Family members, you know, they, they, they let me know, hey, if you don't mind, we have, you know, aunt and uncle or brother or sister or whoever wants to join. I'm totally okay with it. I mean, no big deal. So feel free to add. They also might have questions for you. Absolutely, as I will do it as long as it's questions re re uh, regarding the subject at hand or the person we're reading for. But here, all these people pop in in the end and they say, "Oh, okay. Uh, can you tell me if I'm going to get a job?" I'm like, "Ah." So that kind of anyway. Um, I know, but you know, if they spring it on me, I can't, I can't help it, right? <laughs> yeah, I got skills giving Bernie a bath, right? Uh, hey, Rock and Robin. Yeah, I had to because, you know, I mean, I was like, even if I didn't have the live and I, and I had free time, I would have like basically told them, hey, you know, that's just not acceptable, right? Oh my God, I'm telling you a girl, uh, but I'll tell you one thing with the long nails. Ooh, if you have an itch and you need to scratch, it feels good. Well, I want to share something with y'all. I got some beautiful, uh, this is my dear <laughs> uh, uh, gypsy girl. She sent it to me. We were talking about, I don't know, like I was talking about hairbands or whatever. She sent me this beautiful card. And she, I just want to show off, okay? And this is my way of saying thank you to Gypsy Girl. And she sent me all these beautiful uh, hairbands, y'all. Look at this. I don't want to wear it now. I mean, like now, now, because, uh, hang on, because I have to, like, wear the proper clothes for it. I'm just wearing a, like, a active wear thing. Oh, my God. This is so beautiful. I love it. And, um... She sent me these, like six or seven of them, and I just absolutely love them. So I just want to say thank you, Gypsy Girl. I so appreciate it. 
and they're very well made. I mean, the quality of it is pretty good because usually this kind of stuff, you know, when we go and see, it kind of looks a little sketchy or unfinished, but these are actually very well made. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So this one, uh, surprise, surprise, kind of goes with this one, right? <laughs> so there we go. I'm going to take it off for now because I don't feel like wearing it. Uh, but um, when I was doing all that reading, I had it on. So thank you so much. I kept it here because I like to see when I sit and I'm recording and then I can see, you know, which one looks good. <laughs> and then I wear it. <laughs> So thank you, Gypsy Girl. I so appreciate. Yeah, the the I they are all beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much. So I love it. They're very well made too. Yeah. Girls, let me tell you, we are never too young. No. I have to rephrase that. See, I can't even get because I'm so freaking old. <laughs> we are never too old. You can never be too old to wear a hairband or wear some nice accessories. Now, granted, you know, the, some of them are like, like you have to make sure it's age appropriate, right? But bling, I mean, you can never be too old for bling, let me just say. So, anyway. Hey, Pandora Sparks. You know what? That is terrible, isn't it? I actually thought about doing the uh, uh, a reading for the Texas school thingy on Wednesday for Wicked Wednesday, but I didn't. I would have done the reading on him, right, the 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 killer, but I didn't think I it would be appropriate to give him the time of day, you know, and so I kind of said no, I'm not going to do it, but. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, whatever might have transpired in his life, how do you arrive at the conclusion that going and killing young kids, six, seven, eight year old kids, is going to balance the scales or make right what was wrong or or somehow appease you or how do you find satisfaction or whatever like I don't get it there was a clip on YouTube that I saw uh, some news channel was able to get in touch with his grandpa uh, and the grandpa gave a tour of that house where he shot the grandma in the head apparently and she's in stable condition I thought she was passed but she's apparently in stable condition and they showed a little bit of all the blood splatter and all that stuff. I was like this, 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 you know, I, and another thing, y'all, I'm going to say it on, and this is social media, so I'm going to say it. People can think what they want of me. Sometimes I feel like putting these people in prison, it's not worth it because they go do all this heinous stuff and then they get to enjoy a cushy life right everything is catered for they don't need to work no you know we, we know that they don't need to you know they get free medical free rent no need to pay taxes free food everything but on the other hand in this case he they shot him and he died i don't know how many shots we don't know all of that it'll come about later i'm like you know take him out a bit at a time seriously don't just put a bullet to him, take it down, take him down, one notch at a time. How many kids and how many people did he kill? Well, he gets that many bullets, but strategically, so that he feels the pain for every one of them. That's what I think. That's my personal opinion. You can agree or disagree. Uh, uh, I, that's just, yeah, in the f uh, head or face or something like that. Even I, I, I mean, me too, I thought she was dead. No, she's apparently in stable condition. Oh, and they also said, um, also said, uh, um, yeah, he did, t yeah, Susie, you saw that, right? Yeah, um, 
Oh, Susie, you're being very polite when you use that word. I got other words that are even more, but we can't say it. Um, they interviewed, they showed on national uh, news, one of the news channels, they interviewed uh, a child who was witness to the whole thing and whose classmates died. And apparently this evil, evil person walks into the room and he basically tells them it's time to die or time for you to die or something. Can you imagine, can you imagine the trauma that those survivors, I mean, the trauma they're going to have for the rest of their lives? I mean, no child that age, no child should experience any trauma like this, be it deflected, directed, direct, however, right? And then for them to be witness, and he says, that child says he put five, apparently one of the little girls was trying to call the police and he found out and he shot her, like, and five bullets, his friend got five bullets in him. I mean, can you imagine this little child is saying all those things? Can you imagine the nightmares? Oh my God, I can't, I can't. I just can't. It's just crazy. Hey, Lucinda. They absolutely, all capital. I'm not against capital punishment. I'm not against it. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. And I, I'm saying, like, he killed 19 people or 20 people or something like that, or 21. They should have strategically give, like, shot 20, 20 or 21 bullets. Like, let him feel the pain of every single thing. Like, every single one of them. Oh, I didn't know that, Elizabeth. I can't tell. This is just like crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, let's get on with it. So before I start, let me make a couple of uh, statements. Those of you who have been with me for a long time are probably going to roll your eyes. Excuse me, I have to say it. <laughs> so uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. These are my observations and my opinions. Please do your own due diligence, do your own research and form your own conclusions. And the viewer, it's at your discretion how you... Um, uh, receive these or uh, how you your opinions of these uh, videos uh, another thing I want to say for those of you who are uh, wanting to uh, like I said I'll send that invitation out between after I finish this live stream for the Saturday uh, zoom and I will shortly make the announcement for the classes and how much it's going to cost and this and that and how are we going to do it etc I will tell you though it's going to be limited seats simply because I want to be able to give everybody a fair amount of time in case they want to ask questions if i if i just say oh unlimited you know that's crazy it's not going to happen so i'm probably going to keep it really tight and then have multiple you know so we'll start at ground zero so there'll be three levels level one level two level three and the reason i have broken it into three levels is because some folks may be at a fairly advanced level some may be intermediary level some may want to start off at zero so if if i have just one class and there are two people over there who are complete beginners or novices and then three people who are advanced they will probably be annoyed at the questions the beginners are going to be asking right so that's why i want to make it very clear um, i'm breaking it into uh, sessions and uh, um, I also want to encourage you all, those of you who are intermediate or advanced even, if you are interested in joining, and, and I'll give out all the details later, to please try and, and start from the first class. And the reason I say that is it's not because it's a ploy to take your money. That's not the reason. Uh, you know, um, at the end of the day, you know, I want you all to be happy and satisfied with what you all are learning and what, you know, uh, information you all are going to get. Um, because everybody has their own way of reading tarot, etc. So the way I, uh, for those of you who have seen my Saturday classes that I used to have, I go through, my way of looking at things is entirely different. So, uh, you know, it would help to have that consistency, right? So uh, for your own benefit. But if you feel that, you know, uh, oh, I, I know all of this, I'm just going to jump and I'm going to go to the advanced level, then be warned because I will actually have, like, I'm going to put you on the spot and have, like, exercises on camera and that sort of a thing. So, like, tests, right? Okay. Um, Janet Eckerlin, we have had some crazy acts in a few schools here in Sweden too, the last 
USA, yeah. It's 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 the it's weird, right? Oh yeah, Pauline. Seriously. Hey Sharon. Uh, uh, hey uh, Becca, how are you doing? All right, so let's get started. So the reason I wanted to, uh, I picked on this is I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, um, Delvin in the house. Hey Delvin. Yeah, I see him. Um, because, you know, I was thinking this is a case that I felt was, again, like per usual, you know, with regards to the Kennedy family and all the shenanigans that they have, uh, you know, um, they have uh, done and the number of, you know, criminal acts and such that they have participated in or carried out or been responsible for, uh, you know, and how much of that has been covered by the media, how much of that has been covered by them and because of their political connections or because of their connections with their mafia even. So I felt that uh, this lady did not get her, her, did not get justice. I truly believe that. Um, and this is Mary Jo Kopechne. Kopechne. I apologize if I'm not saying it right. I sincerely uh, apologize for that. So Mary Jo was born on July 26, 1940. And she died on July 18, 1969. And the doofus goofus who she was uh, with, and I do believe he's responsible or his carelessness or his callousness um, uh, contributed to her demise. Uh, so in other words, I hold him responsible. My opinion, that's it. So the doofus goofus is Teddy Kennedy, Edward Moore Kennedy, and he was born on February 26, 1932 and he died on August 25th, 2009. So, um, let's see. Okay, so uh, when I did my, the usual thing is that I do, uh, Mary Jo, uh, she is a Leo son, okay? Uh, I think I have her ascendance also over here. Oh, don't tell me I shut it down, oh no. Let me see where her ascendants are. Oh, come on, man. Did I shut it down? No, it's here. Hang on. Let me get... Uh, uh, so let me read this out. So that way, for those of you all who are interested, not Ted Kennedy's doofus. I can't... Uh, okay. A list of charts. Let me go to... Mary Jo. Okay, so for Mary Jo, her natal chart, her sun is in Leo, her moon is in Aries, her Venus is in Gemini, Mercury is in Cancer. Now, I don't have the time of birth. So when we don't have the time of birth for a person, it is fairly acceptable to go the happy medium and say 12 noon. So you're basically dividing the day in, in two, right, in halves. So the degrees could slightly vary. Having said that, uh, Sun is in Leo, Moon is in Aries, Mercury is in Cancer, Venus in Gemini, Mars in Leo. She's got Jupiter in Taurus, uh, Saturn in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus. Those are some heavy, heavy energy, heavy hitters in Taurus. And uh, Taurus is one, two, three, four, five. Hang on one second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth house. Taurus is her tenth house. And in her tenth house, she has Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. So what does the tenth house signify, right? The tenth house talks about work, uh, your profession. It also talks about um, uh, career, reputation, models, life goals, etc. So I'm going to say that this young lady, Mary Jo, she would have uh, been very uh, higher education, distant travel, that sort of a stuff. Um, very, very goal oriented. Um, had uh, there's, there's a fairly strong influence of father for her too. And uh, I'm going to say that strong goals, smart intelligent person 
um, strong, uh, goal-oriented, that sort of an individual. So think about it. Uh, Taurus is a very Earth energy. It's uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus. It's very earthy. It's uh, and then you have Jupiter thrown in there. So her ability to be cognizant of finances, etc., that sort of a thing. Uh, all all things Venusian, you know, beauty and uh, you know aesthetics and having a flair. Uh, you know, being. Um, uh, even a good cook, I would say, uh, and also having the social skills. Um, it's all amplified because Jupiter is there. And then you have uh, Saturn and Taurus. Now, here's the contradiction. Now, what is Saturn? Saturn is a planet who, who um, wants to teach you some life lessons. Uh, Saturn is somebody who puts you through your paces, but if you do what you're asked, he's going to give you great reward. So with Saturn being over there, it also shows that she, whatever she did, she put in a lot of effort and she was always successful in that. Or she always, uh, all her attempts or her endeavors came to fruition, right? And then you have Uranus. Now, think about that. Uranus is the planet of sudden changes and shocks. So there too i wouldn't be surprised where at certain stages in her young life she must have had some drastic changes with regards to her 10th house aspects like she could have changed tracks now let's say with a career she might have changed a career uh, possibly or think think about changing a career or uh, even as far as her reputation is concerned right uh, she would have not that her reputation was sullied, but her reputation, I feel, would have been um, associated with somebody else powerful. So there's a lot of that kind of a dynamic going on in her life. And even as far as her goals were concerned, she must have, she must have thought a couple of times to change her life goals or say, you know, this is not going to work for me, so this is what's going to work for me, that sort of a thing. Now, Doofus Goofus over here, I'm going to go back to his chart. Um, uh, so he was born on February 22nd, 1932. He has uh, Sun in Pisces, Moon in Virgo, Mercury in Aquarius, Venus in Aries, Mars in Aquarius, Jupiter in Leo, Saturn in Capricorn, Uranus in Aries, Neptune in Virgo, Pluto in Cancer, Lilith in Aries, and Not Not in Pisces. So between the two of them, I would say the reason of the premise, I'm going to shut this, uh, th uh, this down, hang on one second, let me close that screen. So I'm going to say, um, with regards to the dynamics or the attractions between the two of them, absolutely they would be attracted to each other. Um, so if anybody is saying or said that, oh, it was a platonic relationship because they were working together, I don't think so. I think it was a uh, fairly personal relationship as well. Um, she also has that very uh, outgoing kind of nature because with Leo's son and then she's got Moon in Aries too, which is very interesting, and Venus in Gemini, oh my God. And he is a Pisces son, right? Moon in Virgo and Venus in Aries. So she has Moon in Aries and he has Venus in Aries, right? So they would have automatically been drawn to each other and, and attracted to each other. Now, before I go any further, I will tell you, when we talk about the houses and what they signify in terms of first house, second house, third house, fourth house, the Western astrology has got some minor changes as opposed to Vedic astrology. So please be, somebody would pop up and say, oh, but in Vedic astrology, the 10th ten ten house signifies father. Well, in Western astrology is the ninth house. So, anyway, so let's get on with this, okay? I'm going to do this reading. Oh, uh. Yeah, the Kennedys, absolutely, absolutely. 
And see, one thing I will tell you with regard, I think Susie Q was uh, answering Pauline's question with regards to the classes. See, uh, you know, the whole premise of this, me having these classes, y'all, is because a lot of people have asked me, yes, and in the past I have taught, but, you know, I figured, why not, right? I mean, if y'all are genuinely interested and yeah, somebody asked me, hey, Christine Van Buren, how are you? Um, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. People are, oh, are you not afraid that they might kind of be successful? Well, what the hell? I mean, like, there's enough place for all of us in this universe. So at least I'll have some pride saying that I taught them, you know, that sort of a thing. But no, it's just a question of sharing knowledge. Um, so just, you know, join at the basic level, y'all. Again, please know that's not my ploy to take more money from you. I mean, you decide, but then if you join at an intermediate or advanced level and then through our communication and through the process of the class, I know whether you really are at that level or not. And if you're not, I'm going to kick you out and refund your money because you're wasting my time and interrupting everybody else. You know me, I, I don't hesitate doing that. So, um, Michael Doherty. Hey, Michael, good to see you here. How are you? It is my pleasure, my pleasure. All right, so let's see, Mary Jo Kopechnik. Y'all, again, I apologize if I'm not saying it right. So show me what I need to see. All right, these three want to come out, so let's take it. We have fire. Come on, camera, are you going to mess with me? Okay, fire, which, of course, she's a Leo. We know that. We have Mars, <laughs> the ruler of Aries, we know that. And see, she's got moon in Aries. And then we have Saturn. Am I surprised? Not at all. So that is very, very interesting. So uh, to, um, fire, which is five, eight, and 10. So fifth house, wait, where is the fifth house? Fifth house is Sagittarius, I get it. 8,000 Pisces, okay, and then Saturn is 8, 9, 10th is Taurus, Venus, yeah, because she has Venus, uh, yeah, okay, let's get to this, let's uh, get into this. I'm going to keep this for later, let's do this. that somebody should put it in the uh, in the comments it was more like a feeling of entrapment for her when she died so i don't know whether she drowned or she they rolled off a cliff i don't know exa exactly the sequence of events but i'm going to say that it was more a question of being entrapped so uh, that's what i'm going to say Can somebody put in the comment section, did she die of drowning or did they roll off the cliff uh, and uh, they, and the car crashed or did the car go into the water? I, I don't know how that worked out, but I'll tell you y'all, she was trapped. So she was trapped and there was no way in metal. So there's no way she could have got out of that. So... My man is here. Hi, my man. My man is Rock and Robin. Okay. He drove car off bridge into water. She drowned. Okay. So she was trapped basically. Yeah. So she was trapped in metal. I'm going to say which is the car. So we get that. So we have the hangman. There was a moment of suspension. Suspension as in suspending, right? Like uh, something is hanging, suspending. That's what I mean, moment of suspension. Then we have 13, okay? And then the world card. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. 
So the uh, hangman is Neptune. And Neptune rules Pisces. It's water. Are we surprised? Suspended in water. Now 13, the death card, right? Scorpionic energy, right? Uh, it talks about death, rebirth, regeneration. And then you have the world card, or in other words, the universe, it's Saturn. Look, there is it, it, stuff like this you can't even make up, y'all. The hangman is Neptune, Neptune okay? Who rules Scorpio? Mars rules Scorpio. Mars. The world card, symbolic of Saturn completions. Isn't that weird how they pop up? Right? But I will tell you, with regards to, uh, oh, before I go any further, for her, her first house, second house, and fourth house are very active. First house is Leo, which is a fire sign. Second house is Virgo, which is an earth sign. And fourth house is Scorpio. Scorpio is already here, right? For him, his uh, first house, third house, and eighth house are active. So first house is Pisces. Third house and, and who rules Pisces? Uh, Jupiter and Neptune rule Pisces. And third house is Taurus, which is an earth sign, of course. And the eighth house is Libra, right? And uh, you, you can't uh, make this stuff up. There are so many similarities, so we'll get there. So with both of them having very, look at this, first house, second house, fourth house, first, second, third, and fourth. So let's look at the first house. First house talks about, uh, it's it's the Lagna house in, in Vedic astrology. It talks about how you present yourself, your body, your physique. It's your ascendant, of course. And it also talks about how do you want people to perceive you? How do you want people to, uh, um, how do you perceive yourself? How, it's all about yourself, right? Your physical self, how your, your, uh, uh, the first thing when people see you, like what do they think of you, how do they think of you, that sort of a thing. Both of them, I'm going to say, have been quite, uh, um, quite uh, aware, conscious of their self. Like how do they come across in public? How do they conduct themselves in public? Uh, their, uh, you know, mannerisms, their, uh, that sort of a thing, their interactions. Very, very cognizant of the image, okay? And then for her, the second house. Now, the second house talks about, like I said, values, talents, possessions, ability to earn money, her job, etc. So she had a lot of pride with that too, right? And for him, it's the third house. And the third house talks about your uh, communications, right? Third house talks about siblings. It talks about adventures. Immediate environment could be the physical immediate environment. Immediate environment could be the family immediate environment as in the immediate family or your neighborhood or people who you work with, that sort of a thing. And it also talks about short trips. So clearly adventurous short trips. They were on a trip going somewhere when all this drama happened. Then for her, the fourth house. So the fourth house talks about emotions, home, mother, family roots, right? It talks about property, it talks about vehicles. How did the accident happen? In a vehicle. And then for him, the eighth house. Now the eighth house again talks about will, secrets, occult, death, regeneration, uh, long-term finances. It also talks about age. Age could be physical age. It could be the maturity age, right? How mature you are, that sort of a thing. So it's very, very interesting how there are these overlapping bits of energy and, uh, uh, you know, planets the way they, you know, and how it all crosses over. So, uh,
there was a moment of suspension. I'm going to say that either the vehicle must have been suspended over the bridge for a couple of seconds, which might have felt like it was a really long time, or she was suspended as in, uh, oh, this is going to get graphic, uh, suspension between life and death. So that few seconds, microseconds, it would seem like minutes, where she could have been like, uh, she could have gotten out. So it is that suspension waiting for something to happen and not knowing which way it's going to go. So that's what I say. So another thing I want to say here, let's look at this for a second. So August, he was, uh, he died on August 25th, right? So August 25th is Virgo season. Her second house is Virgo. She died on July 18th, which is cancer season, right? February 22nd. Hang on for a second. That is Aquarius. Very interesting. All right. We have the star card. Okay, so the star card is Aquarius and that talks about hope, talks about inspiration. Its star card is also symbolic of um, human humanitarianism. Sometimes I can't say that, I'm sorry. So it also talks about hope and inspiration, but there was hope in terms of being able to get out of that moment of suspension where she could have been extracted from that web or that restricting uh, what, what am I saying from that confinement of the vehicle most definitely now I'm also going to say here I, and I have to be you know completely as much as I dislike the Kennedys I have to say somebody did make an attempt to try to get her out Okay, now there's a lot of talk about three people being in that car. I don't know, couldn't tell you. We'll see if that kind of pops up somewhere. You have the Prince of Swords. Now the Swords, are we... <laughs> It's right on top of the uh, uh, the Mars and the Scorpio, the death card, right? So Prince of Swords does talk about what is the Swords energy? Swords energy is quick. Swords is, uh, is uh, being aggressive. It's decisiveness. It's being quick. And uh, the Prince of Swords, I would say, is somebody who was quick to make a decision then. But this... The way these cards are, the, the Princess Woods and the Star card are looking at each other, I'm going to say somebody really definitely did make an attempt, very brief attempt, or even considered trying to do something to get her out of there. So that leads me to believe, but see, I don't think that was Mr. Doofus Goofus uh, over here. I don't think it was. This was somebody else. Well, I'm going to show you this card. Please tell me if my imagination is running on, on whatever. Because look, look very closely. Let me see. Do you see this little face here? Hang on. Let me get that there. Do you see this face? This face? Am I imagining things? I promise I'm not smoking or drinking anything except water. Am I imagining that? Or does that look a little bit like Ted Kennedy? <laughs> right? <laughs> My beverage of choice is agua. And the only thing I would smoke if I had a smoker would be like, I don't know, ribs or something. So, <laughs> uh. is Debbie in the house? Hi, Debbie. So we have two over here. 
So we have the ten of coins and then we have the ten of swords. So this right on top of Saturn and the world card. Now what did I say about Saturn and what are the odds that the world card would pop up on Saturn as well because the world card talks about um, uh, uh, completions of a cycle. It talks about a little bit of harshness. It also talks about restrictions, etc. The fact that you have 10 of swords and the 10 of co uh, coins over here goes to show that this event, whatever this event is, it certainly was the root or the cause for Doofus Goofus, Ted Kennedy's career kind of coming to a standstill or greatly affecting his ability to make, um, uh, like have that legacy of his own, be it political, financial, whatever. And Ten of Swords does talk about feeling completely, completely like done. It's like done. I think that fraction of a second when this happened, he realized the effect that was going to have on his profession, on his career, on his future. And that going back the next day business is because he, I do believe he panicked. I do believe he panicked and he kind of lost it because it would have been like, uh, it would have been like, oh shit, what do I do now? So, uh, Oh, yeah, I do believe, yeah, that she was suspended. That's where the suspension comes from, maybe an air, air pocket. Uh, so Janet Ackerland says, I have told you before. I don't know when you told me this because I don't recollect, but must say it again. My sons are distant relatives to Evelyn Maureen Norton Lincoln, who is personal secretary to President John F. Kennedy. And how does it matter? And she goes, my ex-mother-in-law has been doing genealogy for many years. They come from Sweden on the, her dad's side. It doesn't matter to me. So I, I don't know why you would make a statement like I told you before. It's almost like accusatory, like do you not remember? That's a little bit <laughs> weird. Uh, I don't ever remember. I don't know who. Are you telling me you told me? Are you telling everybody in the chat that you told them that you were related or whatever? Either way, it doesn't make a dang difference to me. You know, big deal. Yeah, Aracheli, good to see you. Uh, in all honesty, you know, each and every one of us as human beings have some affiliation to somebody who is famous because bottom line, we are all the same species. So, yeah, anyhow, so let's get on with this. Um, I always believe that the Kennedys... Uh, uh, exactly, Susie. I don't remember either. So I don't know whether Janet Ackerland is saying she told me that because if she had told me something like that, I would have remembered. So I don't know what uh, what that's going on. Uh, um, and honestly, it doesn't in any way like matter or affect me. In other words, I just don't care. <laughs> All right. So let's get on with this. So we have the seven of wands and let me get out the cards and then we go through some of that this guy these two guys and then we have five oh, yeah 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 five of wands okay then we have the sorceress four of cups oh my god so with the seven of wands, right, in the traditional tarot, it talks about defense, protection, okay, trying to fight, you know, defend yourself, trying to protect yourself. And remember I said that star card, I feel that somebody did try to do something for a brief second to try and help her. 
at the end of the day, after all the, you know, the fire died down with regards to this case, this person, there's a little bit of introspection of their thinking, at the end of it all, I had to protect myself. Like literally, I had to take action to protect myself. It was either her or me. Okay. And then you have the five of wands. Okay. This five of wands is telling me that when this whole drama happened, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if the two of them were having some sort of an argument with regards to their personal intimate relationship. This shows either they might have tussled each other while driving in the car which could have contributed to it or they must have had some argument and it's almost like is it too much to ask of you is it too much to ask from you so i feel like there was some sort of a, a feeling of lacking contentment in the relationship or the equation or the dynamics of their relationship so there was a little bit of that push and pull type of thing and, and I do believe they got into it with each other. I do believe so. Either in the car like you know hey stop or whatever or even verbal. Then you have the sorceress which is the high priestess and that is a moon card which talks about intuition okay uh, and it talks about memory and uh, it also uh, talks about a little bit of mysticism. It talks about um, trying to keep certain things hidden, purposefully hiding things, smoke screen type of things. So, and after that, the sorceress card, you have the four of cups which talks about whatever it is that they came out with finally and said to the world as an official press release or told the parents or told whatever. Whatever they said, people really did not buy that story. They did not buy that story. They were unfulfilled, dissatisfied with the answer or with the conclusion. And they felt that a lot was kept covered up, a lot was hidden, a lot of facts, a lot of the truth, a lot of the evidence was all kind of kept under a shroud, It like moon, like, you know, it's kept under a shroud. And they, I would not be surprised if he also said that some parts of it he doesn't remember. Use that memory card too, right? Loss of memory. They're smoking ribs. <laughs> Pauline, that's going to be on my t-shirt. <laughs> Boiler room girls. Is it the supreme sauce? <laughs> Gypsy girl, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And you know what, Gypsy girl? I mean, uh, we were talking about this. This card popped up today in a couple of readings that I did. Uh, you know, I had a couple of personal readings, whatever. That she kept popping up, so that's interesting. We have the Five of Swords. Then we have these two guys want to come out. Eight of Cups. Jeez, damn. Two of Coins. No. Here, this guy, these two. Then we have the emperor. Am I surprised? Not at all. And this guy, challenge. Oh my God. Okay. Let's talk about the five of swords. Okay. So, five swords is Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Now, keep in mind, he has his eight thousand very, very uh, aspected here, and that is Libra, right? And, and it, it talks, talks about balance. balance. Now. Libra is about balance, but five of swords talks about violence, abusive relationships, etc. So I'm going to tell you, I don't quite believe that this relationship that she had with him, whether it was intimate, personal, how intimate, how not intimate, there was a little bit of an imbalance of power, right? 
uh, when we talk about power, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm better than you, but in a relationship, you would like to believe, ideally, it's 50-50. There is give and take, respect, mutual understanding, that sort of thing. There was a lot of imbalance over there, and that's what I would say could have meant uh, abuse or violence. But on the other hand, I would not be surprised if he did have a tendency of verbally abusing her or even physically abusing her. I wouldn't be surprised, at least that's what the card is showing. Now, this card is also, to me, indicative of having multiple um, How should I say it? Like, if she was the main squeeze, uh, you know, he might have had others as well, and maybe that could have been kind of abusive too, isn't it? Because you're not being totally committed or loyal. So I do believe that that is part of the drama there. But then the Kennedys were known for that. I mean, you know, I have to be as, what's the word, um, keeping it classy. I mean, the Kennedy men, I mean, they were all busy, you know, busy using their drill guns, drilling for oil and all kinds of wells, if you know what I mean, right? So they were never known to be totally committed and, you know, that sort of a thing, being dedicated, committed, monogamous relationship. So what's new about that? You must be laughing but with what I said, I'm sorry. Uh, All right, so uh, she will never be forgotten. That's true, Janet. I mean, she's not going to be forgotten. It's very unfortunate because it's almost like, you know, an imbalance of power, right? Here you have the Kennedys who are so powerful and Mary Jo. It's like, eh, you know, collateral damage. Uh, <laughs> Susie Q. Uh, oh, Lily Fly. Those energies make sense, okay. All right. Okay, let's get started. There we have the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups is very symbolic of, remember I said they had an argument or they might have fought with regards to their relationship, why this, why not, whatever, right? Now we understand, maybe because there were other uh, squeezes around, if you will. Uh, they must have been a, a uh, thing of, you know, I'm going to leave. Eight of Cups talks about walking away, emotionally detaching yourself from walking away. Eight of Cups also shows up a lot when relationships are afraid and people go their part, part ways and go their separate ways. So I do believe there was an emotional checking out, right? It's like, I've already checked out type of a situation. And that I do believe is doofus goofus. Then we have two of coins. Now in the traditional two of coins, of course, it's Pentacles energy, it's Earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, or uh, Virgo, right? And her second house is Virgo. And his third house is, uh, at least when I did the numbers, not the astrology chart, right? Remember I said the aspected here? Her second house, which is aspected, is Virgo. And his third house, which is aspected here, is Taurus. So of course, the two of coins pops up. And the two of coins talks about... Uh, Weighing the pros and cons and trying to figure out, juggle and see which one is going to be, which way are you going to swing? What are you going to decide? What is your choice going to be? I'm going to say that somebody who knows will kind of put it in the, in the box over here in the comment section. Was there any talk about them getting hitched up or getting married or having kids or something like that? Because I almost feel like it's like he, as much as she was free or whatever, it's almost like being controlled from behind, but then again, not wanting to be controlled. And then you have the yin and yang over here, right? So it's like, I don't know, do I want to be part of her and stay in the relationship or do I want to detach myself and walk off? Do I want to be free of her or does she want to be free of him? Like what, what, what is going on? But was there any talk about them getting um, hitched up or having kids or getting married? How intimate was their relationship? I don't know. Um, but I do believe that they, 
was a thing of wanting to and waiting to make a decision. Now here's a funny thing. See, remember I said it's on the sorceress card where a lot of things were hidden, right? The sorceress, uh, there was a lot of things hidden that didn't come to light, etc. And that was right under these cards. Saturn, the world, and the ten of swords, right? So I do believe I do believe purposefully waited delay tactics purposefully waiting to be sure that this particular thing completed ten of swords came to a complete ending before they made a decision he made a decision so I'm going to call it. I do believe he purposefully waited to ensure that tennis was she has hit complete rock bottom. In other words, like completely like deceased before he decided to say, okay, now, whatever. And I also do believe with the two of coins, it shows that they waited for some decisions to be made by certain individuals before they came out and said what they said. That's also possible. Then we have the Emperor card, which is on top of the Four of Cups. Now, who is the Emperor? The Emperor is a uh, Aries card. And the Emperor is typically the leader, right? And uh, his Venus is in Aries, her Moon is in Aries. So, Emperor in this case also is indicative of who is the old man in the family, right? Whoever the head of the family was at that time. I don't know whether uh, the father was still alive at that time. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Um, so whoever was the, the, uh, the uh, should I say the dominant male, male or the head of the family at that time, decisions from that individual or whatever decision that individual made was what was implemented and set out. So there was that as well. Then we have seven, which is the challenge, which is chariot. And the chariot is a cancer card, right? So let's see, there's no cancer here in that thing. Okay, so the cancer card talks about um, Finding balance, okay, uh, being successful, meaning managing all the energies and having that balance and control on all those energies. So being successfully able to, 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 how should I phrase it? Being successful in managing and harnessing the energies and all that energy to, to charter the course or to, force a particular outcome. So it's like almost having uh, uh, the ability to manage your emotions, control your emotions, manage the energy, manage you know how to drive, find the balance and to be able to present something, uh, knowing very well that that's not the truth. So when we talk about the chariot car, right, we talk about maintaining your focus and your balance so they did set aside their emotions okay and uh, because they didn't want to let their emotions get in the way or they would have lost it right uh, set aside the emotions and uh, manage all this energy and this drama that's going on keeping your balance maintaining your focus paying attention to detail and it also talks about uh, being successful in being in, in being successful and therefore had the ability and the success in protecting themselves from any more, uh, uh, any more, um, what you call, further, you know, bashing from the public or society per se. This is very well orchestrated and that's the thing with the Kennedys and you know that bad karma is never going to leave them for generations to come because the amount of BS 
and the amount of nasty things that they have done, a lot of innocent people have lost their day, you know, the first family, I mean, for the longest time people were like, oh, the Kennedys are the first family of American politics that could be, but I'm going to tell you they were not, not in any way, shape or form, uh, I don't believe that they had any, any, um, How should I say, they had any uh, care for doing the right thing, that sort of stuff, you know. The only thing that they really gave, gave a flying fiddlestick about was how successful they would be as far as their family and their fortune and their uh, legacy and their uh, political careers, uh, you know, that's basically it. So if anybody is upset with me because I don't like the Kennedys, well, I don't give a flying fiddlestick, so there you go. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, so, uh, can someone, if the month this accident happened, yeah, it was July 18th, 1969 is when she died, so, so isn't that interesting, huh? Her aunt is quoted as saying MJ wasn't very fond of taking in, his nickname was office boy. Hmm. So apparently she was not interested in politics and her life was 100% politics, but he was in the car without planning to have fun about him. Well, something must have happened over there. I do believe they had a little bit of a personal dynamics going on over there. I truly believe that. Uh, so no fiddlesticks given here at all. So now let me look at Goofus Doofus and see what pops up for him, you know. you know, for them, they have no value and respect for people. It's like, they live in this, like, their, their family, that tight-knit thingy is like that, and anybody outside that is like, nothing for them. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't even look upon them as human beings. They're all disposable. They're all like, that sort of an attitude the Kennedys have. So... And look at that family, not one person in that family has, uh, not one person in the Kennedy family, again somebody correct me, maybe I, I don't know, um, is, you could say has had a, had a normal life, like, you know, got married and had kids and still married and doing this and that and that, you know, normal. Right, there's always something going on in that family with every single member of the family. I mean, you look at, uh, What's that chick's name who Schwarzenegger was married to and, uh, you know, all that. I never bought into that marriage. I never bought into that marriage. I always thought it was like a facade. It's like, oh, this guy who's a foreigner and, uh, you know, he's into all that whatever, whatever the heck he did. And, uh, you know, that, oh, you know, she's a Kennedy and that flights of fancy, if you will, and uh, attraction or whatever and I think after a period of time they kind of fell into a uh, you have your life, I have my life. I don't think that marriage was really 100% like oh I love you, you love me type of thing until he kind of cheated on her or whatever he did. I mean and then you look at uh, Doofus Goofus, uh, our governor from uh, New York, uh, um, Andrew Como, wasn't he also married to somebody in the Kennedy family? That also like again it was for political reasons. And he made use of her and he basically dumped her. So. Yeah, house with t shirts, yeah. Okay, let's see, Teddy Kennedy, what pops up for her, for him. That family man is here. Water. Well, I'm not surprised because he's a Pisces. So, six house. Work health, discipline, and habits. Six house also talks about diseases and enemies, etc. Mars. Uh, Mars, Moon, Scorpio, and Aries. That's uh, we have the eighth house. A lot of secrets. Will secrets. Yeah. 
death. Yes, there's a lot of secrets going on for him over here. And Taurus, are we surprised? Yeah, because his third house is Taurus. Short trips. Yeah, look at it. For him too, you have... There are some similarities. I don't think she got the water card. But she did get Mars. So she, she had a lot of Taurus going on there too, right? Because I said she had three planets. What did I say? Jupiter... Uh, did I say Jupiter, Neptune or Jupiter, Uranus and Saturn in Taurus? Jupiter... Uranus and Saturn and Taurus, that's what I said. And here for him, and she also had Mars there. See, for him, he's got water, Mars, and uh, Taurus over here. So, sixth house, work at discipline and habits, enemies, diseases. Mars rules uh, Scorpio and Aries, which is eight. So, I'm going to say Scorpio. Again, we have Pluto. Pluto also rules Scorpio, which is water. Okay? And then we have Taurus. Taurus. And so does siblings and adventures. So, short trips and immediate environments. Yeah. Definitely water. Pluto is, uh, again, uh, not water. Pluto is regeneration. So, death and regeneration. And... Uh, I'm going to say this incident changed him quite a bit. Obviously, if it kind of put a stop on his, you know, his political pursuits, like, you know, running for president or whatever the heck, this is quite a pivotal moment in his life. So I do believe uh, if he had only done the right thing and immediately called for help or immediately tried to bring her up or done, rather than go back the next day, he would have been able to salvage whatever was left, if you will, of his political aspirations and actually go on to be quite successful. The mistake was that moment of panic and always wanting to go to the emperor, whoever the main person in the family was, who made the decisions. Again, I don't know at that time whether his father was still alive or it was uh, John F. Kennedy. You know, John F. Kennedy was way back in, uh, yeah, in the 60s. No, John F. Kennedy was already dead, right? Yeah, because she died in July 1869. I think Kennedy died in much earlier, a few years earlier. So uh, whoever was a decision maker, just going, you know, he should have he should have done the right thing and try to recover, or help her, call for help right away. He would have been able to salvage his career. He didn't. Scared the snot out of me. Yeah, that's a good one too. Oh, the glasses have come off. You all have to send me an email or somebody make a note of this and send me an email of all these sayings. So, anywho. We have temperance. Okay. I'm going to take these guys. We have the Wheel of Fortune. A lot of Sagittarius energy. Look at that. Well, he's Pisces and uh, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, right? So, not surprised, as well as uh, Pisces. We have the Hermit. And the Empress. So, with the Temperance card showing up here, right, it talks about not well traditionally it talks about balance understanding the the uh, um, understanding that moderation is important finding the balance knowing that through reasoning and moderation a lot can be accomplished but in this case you have the temperance card and then followed by that you have the wheel of fortune right so the wheel of fortune is jupiter it talks about growth and wisdom and then you have the Hermit card and the uh, Hermit card as we know, what happened? Is a Virgo card, right? So I think he also realized that, first and foremost, back up, intoxication is very much likely. This also is symbolic of intoxication, alcohol. The wheel of fortune, 
right as we know is jupiter you can say that maybe if you look at it just pictoriously pictorially alcohol unable to maintain balance on the wheel and then you go over right that's possible but here i'm also going to say that as much as he might have tried to find balance and trying to reason and come to a reasonable uh, a reasonable way of of pushing this particular agenda as in his version to the public okay i'm going to say kind of backfired on him it wasn't the wise decision because this card also jupiter growth and wisdom it wasn't the right decision and then you have the hermit card which goes back to introspection okay which talks about um being thinking things from a very thinking analytically setting aside your emotions being very analytical being very uh in your introspection and trying to make smart decisions sometimes it's better to let the heart rule the head but in this case it the fact that he tried to suppress that based on all his introspection is like i'm not going to go into that i'm going to go very analytical and try to figure this out that was his understanding and you have the three which is the empress which is venus uh it's love comfort security etc now look at this his venus is in aries right his moon is in virgo virgo and uh and uh, venus moon in virgo venus in aries aries this is almost to me like a like a confirmation that this is his energy when the cards give us these these very specific you know indications and the matching of the the cards and the sun signs etc and the planetary positions it shows me that this is confirmation that this is the energy that we're picking up on but <clears throat> good question Wait a second. Maybe the Kennedys' curse is is just their karma reaping what they sow. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, they do. But Sherlyn has a good good question. Uh, was Ted Kennedy haunted by what happened that night? Did he regret the way things happened? Um, uh, we can we can get that answer. Hang on one second. Let's just go through this. Ten of Cups. right overwhelmingly emotional the world card again right completions right through spiritual um uh things coming to a completion a success through spiritual uh and a spiritual rebirth but with the 10 of cups i do believe he feels like oh my god i can't believe this is happening to me again it's almost like in his mind he felt that whatever happened to his brother is happening to him but in a different way it's like almost like he feels like uh is this following us like why are these bad things happening so uh, he was overwhelmed emotionally and feeling like things have come full circle in other words feeling like he is paying the debt for what transgressions that john f kennedy and robert kennedy might have done so princess of cups okay and then we have three of wands oh a lot of cards and up to three of wands then we have six of swords wow unbelievable and then we have the king of coins it always boils down to that coins and the money so with the princess of cups i do believe there is almost a feeling of um 
I'm going to go forward like spiritual co co completion through spiritual rebirth after this whole see he had a complete breakdown spiritual rebirth going forward with the renewed emotional uh, approach to things like right three of wands does talk about teamwork, commerce, and expansion, but also talks about having the support system to take action and whatever he wanted to do moving on. It's almost like this whole thing renewed him. It changed him forever. And it also kind of uh, showed him that he has to be able to better manage his emotions. And then you have the six of swords walking away from all of this drama. So I think this kind of brought to light the fact that he has to be very careful in how he manages his emotions, how he manages his relationships, how he manages his own temper. Okay, and then you have the king of coins. And that I think put him on the trajectory to say, henceforth I'm going to focus on what I need to focus on. All right, and be more grounded in terms of my attitude, my opinion, my take, my interest, etc. in terms of my political career, my career, my life, whatever. Uh, being a little bit more wise in terms of investing his resources such that he may be able to reap the benefits. So I do believe that this incident really did leave an impact on his life. I do believe that it really shook him up. The Ten of Cups, cups is is yeah overwhelming joy but it's also overwhelming emotions in terms of like uh, overflowing of emotions feeling completely shook i do believe he was so um Okay, let's focus on the reading. Marcy Limes near Hegel. How are you? Alright, so let's take a look. I think that if he had if he had gone and tried to make an attempt to uh, gone and attempted to save her right away, Bernie, save her right away or call for help or something. Uh, he would have still been able to salvage what was left of his reputation and, his, and he would have been able to salvage his political career and still been able to uh, pursue his hopes and dreams of becoming a president or whatever. Let's look at something else from Mary Jo Kopech. I'm doing good, Mary. Good to see y'all. So again, y'all, if anybody's still interested in joining us for the Zoom tomorrow, just send me an email with your username that you use over here. I'll send you the link for the Zoom for tomorrow. It is at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, not Pacific, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm in Texas, so 11 a.m. Texas time. And then you don't have to pay for Zoom. You don't have to register. You don't have to be a member, nothing. You don't have to have an account for Zoom. You just go and click on the link and it'll bring you up here, okay? So, yeah, let's focus on this. Really. Let's bring everybody's attention back. If any of y'all are looking for a personal reading or a private reading, please go visit my website, therealtarot1123.com, and uh, you will see all the options over there. Uh, my email address, my website address, my social media uh, handles are all in the description box. Just so you know, y'all, I do post card for the day, every single day, at least the best I can, on all my social media platforms, that is uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Uh, I also have a blog, um, you know, www. what? Uh, the real tarot. 1123 blog something oh my god it's in the link it's in the description box click on that i post on that and finally i got together remember i was talking about 
that whole skincare thing that oh my god forever and a day i don't know why i didn't get to it but now you know what venus is entering a uh, taurus correct see that's why now i know wait let's see on the 28th of may venus enters taurus now listen venus is uh rules taurus and venus is all about what beauty and looks and having that earthiness and all that sort of stuff including finances and luxuries and comforts maybe that's why finally i've been able to kind of figure out and and streamline everything to post on my blog so that'll be up so interesting isn't it so all right let's take a look and see what i can get i'm going to pull some cards from this deck three cards for mary joe and then i'm going to pull three cards for ding dong ding along over here Okay, so I'll show you the cards, okay? Ooh, girl! Dang! Oh, jeez. Let me put this away because I don't know if I need it just now, right? See, all that talk about uh, people were saying there was another person in the car, another person in the car. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, okay, so it's very, very interesting. So we have three cards here for Mary Jo on my left and three cards here for Doofus Goofus. So we have, uh, um, oh my goodness, uh, hang on one second. Shoot. We have, why am I getting confused here? I shouldn't be. Mars in Capricorn. Mars in Capricorn. And then we have Mercury in Sagittarius. And then we have Mars in Sagittarius. Ooh. Okay, let me show you the cards. Mars in Capricorn. Mercury and Sagittarius, these are some different cards. We will, as we get through the classes, I will definitely recommend the cards that you all could use and would, that sort of a thing. This is not in any way, shape or form for, you got to be really advanced to be able to figure these things out. Um, so, where is my little there's something else over here yeah okay so when we have uh, Mars in Capricorn think about that for a second Mars as we know is all about taking action going forward you know that sort of a thing and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is a little slower to react Mars you could say is a little impulsive and then you have Mars in Capricorn so there is going to be a little bit of uh, uh, different dynamics in terms of how you accept and process authority and how authoritative you come across as. Are you going to come across as somebody who's being very dynamic uh, uh, and authoritative or are you going to be somebody who comes across as being overly pushy in terms of uh, authority? Are you going to uh, be somebody who completely shuns authority, right? And then we have, uh, um, what I say, Mercury in uh, Sagittarius. And then we also have Mars in Sagittarius. So with Mercury in Sagittarius, now Mercury is, as we know, all about um, uh, uh, communication. And Sagittarius, as we know, is ruled by Jupiter. So it is be having the ability to communicate at multiple levels and it could also mean she could be multilingual and also having the ability to uh, communicate through and to different uh, different uh, classes of people 
and different age groups of people. In other words, I could say this young lady would have been very well traveled and also would have been quite worldly in her experiences because you talk about Jupiter, which expands everything, and Jupiter is also the explorer of the zodiac, philosophically also exploration, and also physically travels, and then you have Mercury, right? Um, and so she would have also had the gift of the gap, okay, quite a good speaker, all right? And then you have uh, um, Mars over here. This is Mercury in, in, in Sagittarius, I'm sorry. And this is uh, Mars in Sagittarius, right? So let me rephrase that if I made a mistake because now I'm second guessing myself. I did say this was Mercury in Sagittarius, right? Somebody correct me. Did I say this was Mercury in Sagittarius? So Mercury is communication in Sagittarius, so we know that. Now here we have Mars in Sagittarius. We also had Mars in, look at this, we had Mars in Capricorn, now we have Mars in Sagittarius. Come on. There we go. Hang on. Right? So now we have Mars in uh, Sagittarius. So this, Sagittarius is a fire sign. Mars, okay, is rules uh, Aries, which is the sister sign to uh, Sagittarius, and it's all about taking action. So now you have these, this Jupiter, right, which is always expanding in terms of being the ruling planet of Sagittarius. Jupiter doesn't do anything in moderation, and you have Mars all about action. It does come across as she could have been somebody who would have been uh, seen as having the possibility of being a little bit dominant in terms of her um, persona, right? She wasn't a wallflower. Now, keep in mind, she's a Leo, right? Leo sun. So, and then she has a uh, um, moon in Aries. So she's got a lot of fire in her. So she could have come across as somebody who's very confident, who's not afraid of confrontation, who could speak her mind, who put you in your spot if she needed to, not somebody who would, a ballsy lady if you will, you know, she would have, she would not have been afraid or intimidated in any way, shape or form by the fact that Doofus Goofus had the family name and that sort of stuff, she could have held her ground. Now moving on to Doofus Goofus, we have three cards and I'll show you this, we have Jupiter, right, in Taurus, Jupiter in Taurus, right? We have Saturn in Taurus, right? And then we have Saturn in Scorpio. Weird energy, isn't it? So let's take a look at it. Not his astrology chart, but doing his numbers. His third house is is aspected. Remember I said it's very heavily aspected. He has Jupiter in, in, uh, and his third house is uh, Taurus here. He's a Pisces. So Taurus has Jupiter. Taurus has <laughs> Taurus also has uh, Saturn. Now that could be a little bit difficult and I'll tell you why. Because Taurus is an earth sign. Taurus is all about the physical comforts, it's having the nice lifestyle. Venus, remember Taurus is ruled by Venus and she's all about having that nice lifestyle, physical materialistic comforts, security, finances, ability to live a certain lifestyle. You could have a champagne, uh, a taste on a champagne budget, you know, uh, wanting all of the nice things and finer things in life. It's all about status, it's all about you know, uh, your standing in society, how, are you, how do people look at you, you know, that pride and that uh, that uh, sense of, oh, look at me, look who I am. It's status. It's basically status. And look at that. Right? It talks about uh, giving a lot of importance to that aspect of his life. I'm not going to say that uh, Ted Kennedy was humble. I wouldn't say he was humble. But I'm going to say there was a lot of pride that he took in his heritage in his family, his family name, his lineage, etc. So he put a lot of stock in that. He had a lot of pride in that. And then on the other hand, you have Saturn in Taurus. Right? 
Taurus again, as I said, is ruled by Venus. And Saturn, what does Saturn do? Right? Saturn talks about you put in the hard work and you get the rewards. Right? So, in terms of all the fine things you want in life, you will get be rewarded times 10 times 20 as long as you show me that you are putting in the effort, that you are working for it. So, definitely, it talks about having ostentatious tastes, wants, lifestyles, etc. But one thing I'll tell you about Ted Kennedy, he wasn't afraid to put in the effort. He wasn't afraid to work. Whatever that work could have been. Schmoozing, wheeling and dealing, I don't know, politicking, whatever. He wasn't afraid to put in the work as long as he got the rewards. But he wanted that ostentatious lifestyle, that, that whatever. He wanted all of that. He liked all of that. And then we have Saturn in Scorpio. Some heavy energy here. And this talks about inheritance, of course, right? Scorpio is the eighth house in the zodiac, and the eighth house talks about what is what is Scorpio, right? It talks about um, uh, regeneration. It talks about you know uh, fire, fire, you know burn everything down to ashes and then regenerate, right? Mars burns everything down, and Pluto regenerates. And the uh, eighth house also talks about, um, uh, what was I going to say, um, death, secrets, uh, it, it talks about um, occult, long-term finances, uh, it talks about uh, sexual fantasies, uh, that sort of a thing, and then here you you throw you throw um, uh, Saturn in there. Saturn is going to really put you through your paces. So when we talk about eight house aspects, there was a lot of heaviness there. There was a lot of feeling like he had uh, a right to inherit everything because of course the older brother was gone so he thought he was automatically going to inherit that power or whatever shifting of power but he also felt like in a certain way he inherited a lot of the bad stuff like why me like now it's come to me type of a thing there is a lot of it's almost like a maze where i feel that he himself in his mind at times was quite lost in terms of his sexual fantasies, pursuits, etc. And also in terms of a lot of secrets that he had to keep, familial secrets, things that might have transpired. I'm going to say that weighed quite a bit on him, but he held it together. Like he was very receptive of, of that kind of a demand on him. He was okay with that kind of pressure put on him, you know, the secrets and the legacies that he inherited because of his family, his name, his whatever, whether those legacies and secrets were good, bad, or the ugly, I feel like, or rather he felt like he inherited everything and it was on his shoulders to maintain that secrecy and to maintain that uh, status of the family. So he felt that he, uh, uh, it, it fell on him to carry all that forward and he did. So, uh, Afro-Human, hey girl, Robino, hello. Um, yeah, I don't know about that three people in the car business, you know, there's a lot of talk about that, but I don't know how far, you know, but I, the first draw, I do believe that the cars were showing me that there's a possibility there were three people involved over there, so. Um, Now, I'm going to ask if there could have been another outcome for this. And as I say that, we have the Sun card, right? In Virgo, the Sun in Virgo. Where is her thing? Her second house is Virgo, right? 
No, according to her, hang on one second, not astrology, but according to this, her calculations here for the name and date of birth. But for him, his moon is in Virgo. Wow. Okay, so let's look at this for a second, the sun in Virgo. Right? So, Virgo is the sixth house, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth house. It's all about your health, your discipline and habits. It talks about diseases. It talks about enemies, that sort of a thing. So um, I do believe that there is a possibility that he could have uh, had a different outcome if he had taken appropriate actions. Now, the fact that enemies are also popping up in this house, I wonder if he thought this was all set up to to make sure to derail him from becoming uh, or pursuing his presidentship, pursuing or wanting to become the president of America. So he did think that it was sabotage. So, Venus in Scorpio, a lot of secrets. Lot of secrets. Lot of secrets, y'all. I'm not surprised. A lot of secrets. I do believe that he felt it was some sort of a, you know, a enemy, his enemy, who purposely, fully had all that happen, sabotage, maybe whatever. Uh, just to make sure he doesn't get to become the president, knowing very well that that would derail his career. There are a lot of secrets still with regards to that case, a lot of secrets that I don't think it's ever going to really come out, you know. Mars in uh, Capricorn. Somebody who is in the position of authority was the one who made this decision and the one who called the shots and said, this is how you're going to do it, this is how you're going to present it, this is how you're going to, you're going to clean up this thing, this occurrence. I really, really, really wish that he had done. I also feel, y'all, with that authority card popping up, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody, if there is there is a possibility this was set up too. I don't know. And one thing that's been popping in my head ever since, like, I've been doing this reading, I started this reading, is... I wonder if there was an argument because she had come to hear something with regards to his career and they had an argument and he might have purposefully decided to offer like I don't know like okay the accident happened they went into the water and rather than go out there and to and help her out he must have said oh shoot she knows all of these things so it's better I let her die so that the secrets die with her you know what I mean that's the thought that's been playing in my head. It's like, I wonder if that's what happened. I wonder if that was also part of the argument in the car that they had. You know, she might have said, oh, you know what? I found out this, this, this and about you. Or he must have not so much to blackmail him, maybe just through the course of the conversation. Or maybe they could have had a personal argument with regards to their personal relationship, where she might have, you know, some, let's face it, sometimes we get vicious and we have that little ace up our sleeve and we throw it in the, you know, so she must have thrown that in and he must have realized, oh my God, uh, you know, and then the accident occurred. Maybe it was a genuine automotive accident or he lost control or whatever, alcohol, whatever. And then when he realized that she was trapped, rather than go help her, he must have said, oh shoot, what she knows could bring me down, bring my whole family down. I better let her just go. Um, I know I have a feeling they had an intimate relationship. 
I do believe that. So, I don't know if she was targeted as much as what I just said, you know, people say that's a conspiracy theory, but I do believe that's the one thought that's been stuck in my head. Yeah, and my question is, Dang, Mercury in Scorpio. I don't want to say anything. I'll just show you the card. I'll figure out. Does it make sense what I, my question was, can you validate what I just said? And this is the card that popped out. I'm not saying anything else. So I'll figure that out. I think that card just forget forget the stars and forget the planets and all. Just pictoriously, pictorially, if you look at that the card, it, it shows everything. I thought I had another deck out here. I don't know which one. Authority again, y'all. See, this card keeps popping up quite a few times in this reading. So I do believe it was like a. It was like, uh, yeah. Just look at the imagery. You don't need anything else. I do believe that it was a decision made by somebody. That authority card keeps popping up. So that leads me to believe it was a, a decision made. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put... Uh, where did this come from? Let's see. I don't even know. So let's put that off. No, actually I'm going to... I'll use this. I'm just going to see if I can any more messages. Yeah, she was dispensable. See, that's that historically, if you look at this Ding Dong Kennedy family, that's what they do. Look what they did to Marilyn Monroe. Look what they did to that lady who was the, I did a uh, recording, I did a reading for her to the, gosh, see now I can't remember her name, the very famous, um, journalist i mean for her time she was like you know uh, i forget her name <clears throat> they offed her to how many people have they offed that's what they do the kennedy family you know they go into all these kind of weird relationships and all that stuff with all these people and then they themselves are a mafia i truly believe the kennedys are nothing but a mafia seriously that's my opinion Oh, we have a Will Smith here. Hello, Will Smith. Four of Cups. Yeah, I'm going to say for her, um, feeling very, not really accepting the, the reasoning. Like, she's like, I know the truth. You're giving me some other answer. Oh, well, okay, even though I know the truth. And what you're saying, the reason you gave me is not the right reason. Reason for her death, all right, fine. You know, very hesitantly, it's like, whatever. That's the energy I get from her. Whatever type of energy. See, that family, even if you look at the Kennedy, the old man Kennedy, he never had much respect for women, the way he treated his own wife and daughter and all that stuff, you know. Uh, hey, Will Smith, good to have you here. I know, Arachelli, she's like, <laughs> well, welcome to our little group, Will Smith. <laughs> Feel free to comment. Uh, if you have any questions feel free, pertaining to this case, uh, feel free to ask. Seven of coins. Delayed success. Oh my God. So, the seven of coins, it talks about delayed success and waiting. So, I'm not saying anything. Look at the imagery in the card. Water waiting, looking to see. I tell you this, this face looks like Ding Dong himself. Look at this. Just look at the imagery in this card. Mm -hmm. 
this doofus over here here it's like waiting completely tired see i do believe that there were three people in the car i do believe that Six of coins. There was a lot of give and take. A lot of give and take. Back and forth. Negotiation. Exchange of information. Right? Exchange of information. Giving and receiving. Yeah, these cards are pretty cool. When I do the classes, I will make recommendations as to... For beginners, for level one, what kind of a deck you should get that will help you because you want it to be as simple as possible simply because you don't want to be distracted by a lot of imagery and the colors and all that stuff uh, to get distracted. You want to get your foundation right. And of course, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, at your discretion, like what deck you want to get. But I think the most of us who are going to be joining the classes already have the deck. You know my favorite, right? This is like the easiest and the simplest deck anybody can use. This deck is just awesome because the imagery is very simple. It's very clean. It's black and white, of course, and gold. I mean, regardless of that, it is not too cluttery with colors because, you know, when you read tarot, Imagery is important, the colors signify things, all those things. So you don't want to get overwhelmed with all that stuff, right, when you're still learning and getting your foundation right. Once you do that and you can have the hang of it, then you can expand and get into all these other things, right? So. No sunshine dragonfly, you didn't miss anything. All right, let's ask her a couple of questions. Karma, <laughs> are we surprised? Right, karma. Are we surprised? That, that, I do believe she was suspended. I do believe she was suspended a little bit. There was a few moments between, like I said, uh, passing of life. There were a few moments. I do believe she could have been rescued. Look at, forget everything. Look at, look at the, look at the imagery of the card. Do you see her? parachuting or, or whatever, this balloon, whatever, it's almost karmic. I do believe she was suspended. She could have been saved. She could have been. Standard rate of white also works. Yes, because it's very simple, clean imagery. It doesn't matter what brand or what make or what, who the creator is. Get something that's very simple and easy. Of course, I make recommendations. Y'all can go. And my one thing is don't feel like you have to spend a whole bunch of money. People, that's another thing. I, I have a lot of people who actually email me and asking you showed that deck in this video you showed this deck in this video where can i buy it where can i buy it and i always tell people look don't get don't and some of these decks are freaking expensive y'all i like i said i i paid good money like i mean all money is good but some decks get really really expensive i always tell people moderation because once you go in, because it looks appealing, you want, oh, I can figure it out, I can figure it out. And then you go buy it, and then you look at it, and you get so pissed off because it's like, uh, I can't deal with this. And you put it away, and it's a waste. So, you know, why, right? So if you uh, moderate yourself, pace yourself, you get to the stage where buying and putting your money in those big decks or those complicated decks or intense decks, not complicated, intense decks, you know, you will get value out of it because you'll enjoy reading them. What's the point in having a deck that you don't enjoy, correct? So was it a karma or, uh, uh, or, see that card, the karmic card shows me that it was her karma, right? Hi, did you know Jose Roman passed away? Oh, did he? I did not. Carol Louis Taylor, hey, I did not. I did not know that. 
Thank you for sharing that. I did say it though in my video. Oh my God, I'm getting y'all. I kid you not. Y'all probably can't see it, right? But oh my God, it just gave me the chills. Oh my God, can y'all see it? <laughs> I have, I have uh, chicken skin right now. I can't believe it. Oh my God. Okay, everybody, this is interesting. So Karen Louis Taylor says, did you know Jose Roman passed away some of else case because you said one more? Yeah, he did. I did say that. Nightmare Before Christmas is good, yeah. Alice in Wonderland is a nice deck, but y'all, yeah, I mean, that, that uh, Summerwell's case, oh my God. That is uh, two days ago, not yet confirmed cause of death, oh my God. That is a spice box deck, Sunshine Dragonfly. Um, I do have a couple with me, so if you want it, let me know. Uh, it's not free, you got to pay for it, and I'll email you and tell you what the price is. And if you're interested, I'll ship one to you. Um, oh, yeah, Araceli, was it homicide? Uh, Araceli asked, was, was it uh, homicide or self inflicted? Rock and Robin, they will not tell yet how he died well how about we find out i don't know if i'm going to share it but i don't think it's a natural death y'all i don't think jose's was a natural death i don't know i don't think it's a natural death that's not what i'm getting though we're going to segue oh my god i know i did say that Pandora, thank you. Oh my God, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I do not think Jose's is a natural death. I don't think. Wow, that blows my mind, y'all. Shoot. That seriously blows my mind. I don't think it's a natural death. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. What's his name? Jose, Jose, let me see. Let me get his name. Uh, wait, oh my God. Hang on one second, okay? Jose Roman, hang on one second. Let me do my uh, numbers, okay? Where's this page? Quickly, give me one second. I know we are segueing into something else. Where's my pen? Okay. Let me see. Y'all, I don't think R O M A. I don't think this is a natural death. Hang on, uh, six and six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, thirteen. Uh, this is uh, uh, plus ten is twenty three. Plus ten is thirty three. Thirty four, thirty five, thirty six. That's nine. Oh. I don't think this is a natural death, y'all. I'm hard pressed to believe. Sunshine Dragonfly, that deck is called the Spice Box Deck. Okay? Wait, 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 wait. I don't know. I said that there would be one more to pass. Yeah, wait. Hang on, hang on. Uh, I skipped something. I skipped something. Well, on. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Susie Q, Q, you are very, very kind. She goes, LOL, you don't need to advertise your tarot classes. Results from last video speak so loudly in so many cases. Well, thank you. I appreciate you acknowledging that. Yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't even know if, if, uh, if it's a natural death. Now, hang on. Did it happen somewhere near a religious space? Something to do with religion. Something to do with religion. Either he was in close vicinity to some church or some place of worship. Or he might have just come back from there or he was heading there or something. To, I don't know why I'm getting that. Okay. Okay. Come on, focus, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to ask again. There's a female and a male involved in all this drama. I'm going to lead more towards self-inflicted. It's not natural death. I'm going to le lean more towards... First and foremost, it's not a natural death. And I do believe I'm going to lean more towards... Hang on. Self-inflicted. So, let's see. Let's see. Dang, girls. Ladies, gentlemen, people, yes, oh my God, yes. I didn't even know that. Thank you for bringing it. I am I, leading more towards that female and there's a male, the king and queen, yes. And they're both king and queen of hearts, so that's a couple. So... Those two eights and those two queens are popped up again. No, y'all, this is something weird. This is really something, something weird. Hang on one second. Something weird. to believe that it was natural secondly I'm leaning more towards uh, self-inflicted okay Jody Sue Brown is who is that who is Jody Sue Brown I don't know 
Who is that? Uh, sorry, Becca, we kind of, somebody brought up the subject, so I kind of decided I'll do a quick card pull. See that queen of hearts and that, yeah, so... Jody Sue Brown. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That Queen of Hearts, man. I'm leaning more towards self inflicted, y'all. Oh, Jody Sue, the Wells and Neighbors. Oh, the Wells Neighbors. Okay. I'm going to lean more towards towards self-inflicted, but let me take a look at that Jody Sue, whoever that chick is. What did I do with my pen? What is her name? Jody Sue Brown, correct? J O D I. Is that the correct spelling? I don't get a good, good, I'll tell you one thing about this Jodi Sue, uh, got the, um, I'm going to say we have 11 and 2, so it talks about benefits. So there's something that she stands to benefit, uh, like-minded people, groups and friends, and also benefits. So something to do with people and that she hangs around with, who she's associated with. So it's like beneficial to both. Second house talks about value, status, possessions, money, income, family, etc. So there's some sort of a financial back and forth as well so oh she's oh now she's got a whole name hang on Araceli hang on so this changes it because now I have his whole name so Jose Roma oh my god excuse me A N G E L twelve So, one, four, five, really, bunny? Really? G. G. Hang on one second. Uh, right. Okay. So, let's 
negative 10, 20, 21, that's 3, plus 3, 9, plus 1, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? That is 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, so 12,000 goes to 3. So give me one second, so December, so 3, okay, wait, 10, 20, 30, 33, which is 6. Oh, wow. Okay, so, sixth house talks about enemies. Third house talks about immediate environment, short trips, communication. Twelfth house talks about expenses, hidden supports, institutions. This is not a natural death. This is not a natural death because if he is 1219, then he is a Sag, correct? So let's take a look. 1219 is a Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius, sixth house, one, two, three, four, five, six house is Taurus. Third house, one, two, three is Aquarius. Sudden shocks and changes, get it. And twelfth house is Scorpio, which is very intense energy. This is not a natural death at all. Hey, Anne, good to see you. Oh, um. No, you know what? I won't do this. I'll do this guy here. Show me what I need to see. Well, so so that's what it kind of validates that sunshine dragonfly with regards to Jodie Sue, right? I said, uh, what did I say about her? Uh, money, benefits, exchange of you know her immediate environment so something exchange money benefits right values talents possessions ability to earn income so let's focus on poor uh, jose i mean i feel terrible for him I mean, that's terrible i'm not taking that show me jose what i need to see show me what i need to see oh my god that is so terrible Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So we have Jupiter in Aries. Okay. And then we have now, of course, he's a Sagittarius. And Aries is, and Jupiter rules uh, Sagittarius. And Aries is a sister sign. Then we have Mercury in, in Leo, which is, again, uh, his sister sign. Remember, Mercury, uh, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo are sister signs. Then we have uh, to Saturn in Leo. Oh my. Three individuals kind of sort of contributed to this drama there is an enterprise and that enterprise is religious enterprise something to do with that we also have the infinity we have the uh, the symbolism of how i'm gonna say it organized religion works so either he was going towards a place of worship or coming back from a place of worship or he was near a place of worship or somebody at the place of worship has something to do with this or might have contributed. There was a whole lot of drama going on, a lot of situation. There has been a whole scene that has been created and contributed for this, a lot of it. Then we see, uh, what do we see over here? Saturn in Leo. Um, why is this religious aspect coming in so strongly? I don't get it. 
The sun went out on him. Basically, the light was snuffed. There was a little bit of dramatics going on, either an exchange of words. I feel like he was either having an exchange of words with somebody or somebody came and was yelling at him or screaming or there must have been some drama like that going on just before, either just before this tragedy happened or a couple of days or a day or hours or whatever. And it's like immediately his, it's like the sun went down on him, the light was blocked. Um, but I am also going to go so far as to say there's a feeling of, see again, fifth house, so he's a Sag, right? One, two, three, four, five, fifth house is Aries, so I see a fifth house, fifth house. There is a feeling of, I have been very generous thus far and done the best I could, and that's it. Like you've run out of, you've run out of chances, you've run out of options, you've run out of excuses. Either somebody has said that to him, or he has thunk it. It's very unfortunate. This is not a natural death terrible maybe maybe he was confessing something what he what, yeah that's what I feel because it's like he's shouting he's like almost having an exchange of words with something either he's shouting at somebody or shout, something somebody is shouting at him he's like I'm gonna where's that card damn it now I'm not gonna find that card it's like he's calling out, he's roaring, and he's saying, listen, listen, listen. And so that must have, exchange of words must have happened. And somebody must have pushed back at him too. I, y'all, this is a, this, some of his case is, is something else. Maybe he was confessing at church too. Maybe, maybe he had gone for a confession. Who knows? I, this, oh my God. Okay, so let me stop with this guy, okay? Let me stop with this. Anybody has any other questions? Um, because we were getting past like 2, 2, 15. How about we stop at 9.30 so then I'll have time to uh, send out those emails. But I wanted to uh, say one more thing, y'all. Um, you know that case I um, I posted the Wicked Wednesday? Oh my God, do I have her date? No, I threw it away. I think I threw it away. Yeah, I throw away all that information. Usually, you know, my waste paper basket over here has all the scrap paper and then I get rid of it. Um, but uh, what is her face's name? That Caitlin uh, chick. Oh my God, I did a video for her, remember? It's not the back of it. Uh, Caitlin, that cyclist thing, right? Uh, and I felt that there was some more drama there. I feel like doing a quick general, uh, let's see if she's going to be found, a Caitlin chick. I feel for her, you know who I'm talking about, right, that uh, she she murdered that, that uh, Anna, Mariah, and that cyclist guy and all that stuff. So I feel like she, Things are closing in and she's going to flip. Either she's going to run out of resources and come and ask somebody for help and she's realized that people are not willing to help her and she's just going to off herself or she's by default, that's how she's going to be found. Caitlin, Caitlin, is she going to be found alive? Four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, oh my. Oh. Susie Q and Delvin. Oh, the echo, is that what you meant? Because Susie Q, you have my telephone number, don't you? You could always text me or even email me. But uh, is that what you mean by uh, Susie Q? So yeah, I do believe. Yes, I do believe. Q 
K-A-I-D, I believe, is how are you misspelled. I have a one yes. I do believe it should be found, but they got to be rushing towards her. They should be wasting time. But she'll be found, but I'm going to say this, y'all. I'm going to say this. So that's her dad. She's got two young guys helping her. I mean, younger as in peers. Her dad is instrumental and she's got two people helping her. Total three. I stand by that. Uh, Echo, okay. Uh, Xavier Harrelson, one year today, his anniversary. Oh my God. Yeah, I saw your comment earlier, Carrie Charles. I saw it. I don't know who, let me see whose energy is around me now because I'm only going to get pick up a letter, okay? Yes. I'm telling you if a, if a W as in William pops up, I'm going to about flip right now. That's a number, I don't want a number. I don't want a number. X. Oh my God. Xavier. I don't know. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. It was when I was talking about Jose. Again, I have numbers. Okay. Eight. M. M is Mariah. His birthday is on May 30th. I, that's what I'm trying to figure it out because I have S, M, and X. Let me see. I'm going to pick up some more. W. Oh my God. What did I say? If a W pops up, I'm going to flip out. Look. S and W. S and W. Hang on now. I gotta pick three more. No, number A. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have an A and I. I'm going to do one thing here, okay? Um, yeah, we're meeting tomorrow and I just didn't get a chance to send out the uh, Zoom invitations. That's why I said in the beginning, uh, I will send out the Zoom invitations once I get off this live stream, okay? I have set it up. I just didn't get a chance because today I had a lot of personal readings and the last reading, it was pushing it. I got done at 6.45, so, you know, uh, so I will send it. So, yeah, Summer, Moon Wells, yeah, SMW, and Xavier Harrison. Okay, let me look at, I'm going to just do three cards for Summer, and then I'll shut it down, and then I'll do three cards for Xavier. Okay, Summer, show me what's going on. Mercury in Capricorn. Web of Lies, organization, Web of Lies, charity under the pretext of charity, unfreaking believable. 
unbelievable. Organization under the pretext of charity concentrated effort in weaving web of lies and under the pretext of charity like kids and adoptions and No, y'all, this is not looking good. I am going to go back and I'm going to say that it's organization. People in a very organized way have are involved in this or people who are part of an organization who actually are, you know, they talk about the church and this and that and all that bull crap, but oh my God, I'm just going to show you the card. Look at this card. See, we have Mercury in uh, Capricorn. Then we have Saturn in Gemini and then Saturn in Cancer. Look, y'all, this is, this Summerwell's case, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are involved in this, a lot of people. Uh, it has something to do with organized uh, organization, uh, web of lies, people speaking bull crap when they shouldn't purposefully misleading, misguiding. And these are the same people who are trying to say, oh, we protect the kids, we rehome kids, we we adopt kids, we do this, we rescue kids, you know, all that stuff. Uh, from we, we remove kids from, from bad situations and we put them in nice situations. It's all organization. Uh, I'm, 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 that's it, I won't say anymore. Uh, I'm going to do another another reading for her, particularly now that, that Jose has gone. I think I will, which is very unfortunate. I feel for him. My condolences to his loved ones. But uh, um, the fundraiser money scam, yeah, that I said that way back when. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly, Susie Q, you're right. Okay, now I'm going to look at Xavier Harrison. Restlessness, idealism, originality, let's see. So again, we have Mercury in uh, uh, to, to do Aries. Then we have the Sun in uh, Aquarius, and then we have Mercury in Aquarius. See with Xavier Harrison. I don't know about this child. It's almost like somebody led him, him astray. It's like somebody... I would say he was a very restless spirit in the sense that his mind was restless as in... Uh, I'm going to say he was a smart kid, but also his mind was always thinking outside the box. There's an element of restlessness there, like feeling like, oh, this, oh, that. You know what I mean? So a lot of teenagers are like that. They are restless, yes, and, you know, they have 101 things going on in their mind. But I do believe somebody noticed that and they literally lured him into this mental constantly moving, okay, Aries is, is about the head, of course, and then restlessness because you throw Mercury there. So a lot of quick, fast thinking, a lot, like scattered thinking, like things going 20 different directions. 
he was lured. He was sh- given an olive branch, if you will, uh, and, and lured. I do believe he was lured. He was 100% lured. And that is more so to say, look, you come here and this is where you can flourish and be your true self. Because here, you are not given that opportunity, but here you will. So that was the lure. Uh, didn't get, yeah, unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to say something about Haley Dunn. Let me make sure this is the same young lady. Give me one second. I need to look up the picture. Uh, give me one second. Let me make sure. Yes, this is the lady. I'm going to say something about this and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, he did have a little bit of ADHD. It, it's a possibility. So one thing I'll tell you, uh, I would be more than happy to do a reading for Haley Dunn, but I'm kind of a little bit annoyed. And the reason is because, not that you know I select or anything, at the end of the day I want to, uh, there are... Wait, wait, I can't see that without my glasses. Sunshine Dragonfly says, yeah, numerous visions being set up by YouTubers on 15th, only one of three that I'm aware of seems to be on the up and up. On the 15th, what was the vision on the 15th? Like, what's the 15th? I don't know. Somebody tell me because I'm lost. Okay. So, uh, what happened with the Haley Dunn situation is that I got an email from somebody. Uh, I These two people I've gone and looked at, they're all from the same group of people. Uh... They kept contacting me, wanting me to do a reading for Haley Dunn, and then I said, you know what, I'd be happy to do it, and then they didn't want me. I said, I will do a reading and post on my thing, but then no holds barred. They, they said, oh, their father wanted to join. Uh, I said, I'd be more than happy. I said, invite him. He can come and participate in the comments. And for some reason, uh, this, this lady says, oh, the father backed out at the last minute. He's not comfortable doing it. I said, fine. And I kind of had a feeling I was being played. And then what happened, I got an email, I said, you know, set up a personal reading, I'm okay, I don't charge, you know, he can get on the thing and he can ask me whatever questions he wants. And so we set it all up and the last minute he backed away again, he backed away again. So back and forth, back and forth, and then finally I was like, enough, you know, I mean, I've given you more than three opportunities to come through. I understand, you know, that sometimes the families, they want to do it and last minute they get you know, upset, nervous, second guess, it happens, right? Because you're the ones who are going through this trauma of, of a missing child or a missing loved one or a deceased loved one. So I can understand the trauma. And then I said, you know, you let me know when you are serious and then when I can fit it into my schedule, I'll do it and I can let it at that. Then another person, okay, and I went and looked at They are both part, these two women are part of the same group. Or they could be the same person, but the pictures, I think they are two people of the same group. She goes on and on about, can you do a reading, can you do a reading and all. And finally I got mad, the last email I sent them and I same, same thing, rigmarole. Oh yeah, we can do, oh yeah, this, oh yeah, that. And then I said, okay, well show yourself. I do it via Zoom. Oh, can we do it via phone call? No, I want to do it via Zoom because I want to see, if you're saying the father is going to be on that call, then I, I should see the father's face. And I can recognize his face because his face, uh, his picture is on the internet. Why is it now you don't want to show yourself on your face and you're saying you want to do it via telephone calls? That's probably because, you know, you're not really representing the dad. Right? So who are you? Why are you wanting to know what uh, comes up in the reading? Are you part of the... And she's like, oh, an innocent man is going to go to jail. Oh, so now you tell me. So are you a part of the... The perpetrator's family or the group, are you supporting him? So now you're wanting to find out for him? Like, no, get out of my face. So I stopped that. I said, stop sending me these bogus requests. This is bull crap. I'm not going to do it. If you are not willing to get on Zoom and show me your face, right, uh, then you claiming that you're doing, you're representing Haley's dad and all that is bull crap. Right? 
because if you show your face, of course I can go and I can look and I can say whether you are actually rooting for Haley's dad and for Haley's side of the family or for the other doofus. So yeah, like whatever. Y'all can. That kind of stuff makes me mad, a little bit shady, yeah. Uh, Koti, email me the name of your family, whoever this person is. Email me the details and I'll see if I can do a reading. So I don't know who these vigils are set, who who's setting for whom who for whom is this vigil? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna of course I mean there's no there is no live stream without a rant, right? So here we go. Oh Courtney says, uh yeah, I, absolutely I will I will do a reading for them, Courtney. Have them uh, email me her information, Christina. Or oh, actually you know what, let me write it down. No need for you to email it. Uh uh, hang on, Courtney. I just uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, oh, oh. Where do you go? Okay, Christina, C H R I S T I N A H Hoskinson H O S K R N S I N. So when you say eight five eighty eight, do you mean August fifth or May eighth? I need to know. That's the only thing I want to know. Courtney, can you clarify what month was she born in? Was she born in August or May? So, Courtney, can you please type out whether she was born in August or whether she was born in May? See, I get confused. I'm sorry. And sometimes it always, that's why I always write my, write out the month in words, in letters, and then the date, of course, in numeric. Uh, August 5th. Okay. All right. Thank you, Courtney. Yeah, have the family reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to do that for them. Absolutely. Um, But see, that's the thing, Susie. I don't think these people were genuinely... Uh, I, there was something very shady about these two women. And I'm like, yeah, no. Uh, oh, Vigil for Summer Wells on June 15th. So one thing I want to say here, you go, people, are you ready for a little bit of rant? So I'm not going to mention this, this, uh, this creator's channel name, but oh my God, oh my God, she drives me insane. She drives me insane. I, I, do, I haven't subscribed to her. I just watched a couple of snippets and unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, when you're talking about a vigil and all that drama, like I know she has done a lot of, uh, um, she had, posted a few videos like how she is doing this uh, celebrating her birthday and having people donate and money and this and that and all that stuff and then uh, it's almost like somebody actually sent me the yeah the glasses have come off wink wink so somebody actually sent me the link to that video and I that's how I came to know about this person's channel and uh, she it's almost like she is she had a live stream and it's almost like she is you know how when you go to those places and auctions and they bid like that like she was talking like that to her subscribers and say come on you can do better than that you can do better than that and i felt bad because i felt like almost emotionally blackmailing her her subscribers to shell out more money to donate and that's okay Okay, if it is genuinely going for a good cause, you're genuinely collecting this money to do something good, yeah. But what is she doing? She's spending all that money on buying like a, a, a birthday cake and gifts and all that stuff for summer. And the next thing you know, she's doing a video 
with all of that displayed around and trying to contact summer spirit via the spirit box or something like that. And I was just blown away. I was like, wow, okay. And then you people were commenting, like people are pissed off at her because apparently so many people have donated so much money and now they're questioning where the money went and she's uh, it's supposed to be a non-profit and what happened and where did the money go and give us our money back. I was like, oh my God, can you imagine the embarrassment? Can you imagine the embarrassment? Somebody donates and then they call you and say, I want my money back. It's just crazy. And people are like bad mouthing and talking crap about her. And I was like, girl, and you still have your YouTube channel up? I don't know. I, like, whatever. So I am. I will never, never donate like that if I, if I don't know for sure that my money is actually going to reach the person who really is in need, I'm not going to do it. Uh, and uh, that's another conversation I've had with a lot of people because it's like so many, uh, you know, what do they call those things where they say, oh, we have to collect some money for, uh, what do they call that thing where they go online and create GoFundMe accounts and all, so many scammers, it's like crazy and whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. Debbie Bagley says, any idea on Johnny Depp's case? I have a feeling it's going to be in his favor or it's going to be like an amicable settlement type of a thing. Because for him, it was just a question of, I'm going to prove my point. I'm going to show the world who she really is. And basically, that was it for him. It, it really wasn't uh, anything more than, uh, you, you basically ruined my reputation. So now I'm just going to show the world your true colors. That's basically his intention, Johnny Depp's intention. He's like, I'm just going to show people. I, I want an opportunity to uh, make it public knowledge. Make, uh, I want an opportunity to show people your true ugly self. And that was the premise. And he got it accomplished through this case and all that stuff, you know, all that back and forth questioning and all that stuff. So I do think that it's going to go in his favor, uh, but I'm not so sure he's actually going to get the $50 million or whatever he's claimed in, in for defamation. It's almost going to be like, oh, okay, we'll settle it for something less and less uh, or amicably settle for an undisclosed amount out of court or some bull crap like that. They'll be like, but man, that woman is something else. She is a piece of work, man. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Yeah, shady donation request, right? Red Cross conversation. Yeah, we can do that. Remind me. Uh, it's crazy. No, I'm not going to say he's a saint. I mean, he too has some habits that are not necessarily healthy and good, right? I mean, we get that. But I don't think he is in any way, shape or form that much of a, uh, like how she claims he's an abuser. I don't think so. Does he abuse, uh, uh, does he abuse like alcohol or drugs or whatever? Yeah, sure, but I, physical, no, I, I'm not buying it. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, for him it's all about, oh, I didn't hear his closing argument. It says, Debbie Bagley says in closing he asked for no money. See, there you go. It's just about clearing his name, yeah. Let me see. I think it, I think it's going to be in his favor for the most part. Let me see. Ha! Right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, two aces, yeah. I'm quite confident about that. Quite confident. He doesn't deserve what that stupid woman is doing. Absolutely. Yeah, another ace. Yeah, I do believe he's going to, it's going to be more in his favor than it's going to be in her favor. That's for sure. 
I hope she her, her career is completely done for. I truly hope so. I don't think I'm ever going to watch any movie or any television or drama or anything with regards to her. I seriously am not. Another ace. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, the, I think it's going to be in his favor, really. I, I, see, it's never good to wish ill for somebody, you know, we don't want to do that. But she brought it on herself. And I'm going to say this, though. I think she's, okay, again, this is just me. And it's not because, like, I can't stand her. I really can't stand her because of her lies. And, yeah, let's face it, time and time again, I've said it way before also on my channel. It's not just men who are abusers. Women do abuse. I mean, domestic violence swings both ways, man, for real. So I'm going to say that um, I think I had mentioned in one of the videos where, you know how I see her future? Like she's just going to fall off the face of the earth and then 10, 15 years later, uh, she's going to pop up in some mugshot somewhere, you know. What is the name of that? actress that read girl r-e-i-d or r-i-e-d i don't know how you spell it remember she acted in she completely lost it and she was actually quite pretty and she went something something drugs and then she showed up in the sharknado series i forget her name completely like completely you can tell druggy type of a thing this woman is going to pop up like that she 10 years from now you'll see some pop up in some magazine with her looking like that. I can't stand this woman. She needs to. I mean, she's just... Oh, absolutely, Debbie. <laughs> I haven't watched the whole trial. Just little bits of it. She is crazy. Tara Reid, that's the one I was talking about, right? Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, men have it hard too, you know, it's crazy. It's like, yes, she did plot all of this. I mean, why? I think about it, if it was genuinely a case of domestic violence, think about it. If there is genuine domestic violence there and he was really hitting her and punching her, do you think in that moment she's going to be like, let me get my camera and film this guy, as opposed to trying to cover herself and protect herself and defend herself? Or oh, she's going to, wait, wait, Johnny, let me get my camera. While you're hitting me, I'm going to... Think about that for a second. That's the most bizarre thing ever. It's like crazy. Oh, my God. Psycho. Anywho, y'all, I'm going to stop now. Um, I hope uh, y'all enjoyed this uh, video, although it is not necessarily a happy kind of a subject, you know. It's very sad, but, um, you know, I do appreciate y'all participating. Give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Please help me grow this channel. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And for those of you who are just visiting for the first time, thank you. I hope you subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of other videos I do and post. And uh, help me grow this channel, y'all. I'm not ashamed to ask. I would really appreciate that. So uh, again, to my subscribers, uh, thank you so very much. I wouldn't be here, uh, you know, without you guys. So I do appreciate that, y'all know. So let me say thank you, Sherilyn, Sunshine Dragonfly, Elizabeth, My Manx, Debbie, Susie Q, Rock and Robin, Gypsy Girl, uh, Auntie, then uh, Pandora Sparks, Pauline, Courtney, Karen, um, Debbie Bagley, uh, Delvin, did I say your name, Delvin? Yeah, I think. The Carriage House. My Manx 100, uh, we had some newcomers right today, uh, Will Smith, that was too funny, uh, Araceli, then Alia, then um, Macquarie's girl, was she here or was that Afro-human? Thank you for being here, um, wait. I let me go back. There we go. Robin O, Afro Human, there we go. Uh, somebody else was new here, right? So oh my god, I forget her name. Dang she's gonna be upset with me because I didn't say thank you. I hope not. Wait, now I can't find her name. What happened? Ackerland. 
the cycle end. Thank you for being here. So, all right, y'all. So, and Gypsy Girl, of course, thank you so much for your um, moderating and for your support. Uh, Karen Louis Taylor. I think I'll do one for, uh, what's her name? Um, somewhere else. It's about time, I think. Mm. I'm missing a few names. I do sincerely. Wait, was it uh, Doherty? Michael? I forget. Michael Doherty. There we go. Dotre. Doterry. I, okay, I am butchering that. I rock and drop and okay. So I am completely butchering that name. I do apologize, Mr. Michael, but thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your participation. Please do leave your comments. Just a tea light and paper note. If not, it's cool. Thank you for... Wait. Good night, everybody. So let me say good night. Real fam. Bless it be. And I will send out the, your invites right now, y'all. Seriously, the moment I click out of this, I'm going to send out the invites. Thank you so very much. And I do appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you, Gypsy Girl, uh, as always. Um, so see you 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Bye for now. All right. All right.